Tales of apparitions, restless spirits, and phantom forms have been told worldwide for centuries, usually conjuring images of haunted castles in faraway places. Fortunately for locals seeking eerie places to visit, Wiregrass residents need go no further than their own backyard. Here's a sample of our seasonal offering of true Wiregrass hauntings. Our tri-state area, affectionately known as the Wiregrass, has many ghosts and ghost stories. Just stop in any town and if you ask around, chances are you'll find a ghost story. While searching for information and stories for this show, we checked out many avenues, such as a cemetery haunt near Coffee Springs, Alabama, where a ball of fire haunts or guards the graves. We investigated a legend about what happened in Coffee County near Jackson's Bridge and Whitewater Creek during the Civil War times. We've investigated a reported haunted tombstone in Clio or the story of Panther Creek. There was an interesting story that took place in the 1800s in Midland City concerning cat paws and witches. Or an old homestead close to the Harmony community north of Troy that's had its share of ghosts. We've even investigated a bizarre story about a flaming lady just outside the city limits of Dothan. Sadly, these stories turned out to be just that, stories. But in our research, we found a chosen few that are based on fact and have become a part of local history. We begin with a very famous story in the Wiregrass, the story of the hole that will not stay filled. Nobody has ever actually seen this ghost, the ghost of William Skeeto. But people going along the road from Newton where the bridge crosses the Choctahatchee River can tell you that the ghost has been there and is there now. There's a hole there where Skeeto was hanged. This hole is clean, as clean as if a brush broom or pine top swept it out. Now even if the hole is heaped high with dirt every day, the dirt disappears during the night and the next morning the hole is there again. The uh, legend of Bill Skeeto takes us back in its beginning about 146 years ago uh, to December of 1864. Now in December of 1864 in the context of the Civil War what you have is the last days of the Confederacy. And it was a time for many people, including here in Dale County, uh, turmoil, uh, desperation. And there were some events occurring uh, across the South that are going to have an impact here, and they're going to have an effect on uh, what happens to Bill Skeeto. Now, Bill Skeeto was a resident of Newton. He's originally from Madrid, Spain. Came here as a Methodist minister. Uh, he went off to fight the war, and I believe served uh, honorably, from what I've heard, for about three years. And then he reappears sometime around 1864. He'd received word, according to the legend, that his wife was sick. And he came back to tend to her. Now, the way he did that was, and it, it was allowed by law, and was fairly common, he'd hired a substitute to take his place on the front. And he came back, and he tended to his wife, and she seemed to get better but his stay was somewhat prolonged. Uh, and that began to raise eyebrows, you know, uh, especially at the time of, of in the war when every man was needed at the front. So the home guard, the Dale home guard, which was under the command of a uh, Captain Brayer, concluded that uh, Skeeto was a deserter, and they decided to mete out to him a deserter's punishment. So on. Uh, on December the 3rd of 1864, the home guard, uh, having come to the conclusion that Skeeto was a deserter, uh, ambushed him uh, down by the river. It used to be an old bridge here that's not here anymore. And uh, got a rope around his neck, got him on a buggy, and intended to hang him. And they threw the uh, rope over the limb of a post oak that used to be here. It's no longer here. And uh, somehow, depending on who you ask, whether they just miscalculated and chose a limb that was too low, or in, another, in other accounts, the limb bent uh, with Skeeto. At any rate, he lands, uh, after the buggy runs out from under him, he lands on his tiptoes. And a uh, man there at the time named George Eccles, uh, who said to be a cripple, may have just been here recovering from his uh, war wounds. Uh, he takes his crutch and digs a hole out underneath uh, Skeeto's feet in the soft sand there, and Skeeto is then able to, they're then able to complete the hanging. Uh, a little bit later, some friends come from town and uh, take Skeeto's body down, and they lay him out in a cotton house that was across the river. Uh, too late to do anything for him. 
the uh, the aftermath of those facts is where the uh, we get into the realm of more facts and fiction, depending on your fancy. And that is that the hole that George Eccles dug under Bill Skeeto's feet is still here, 146 years later. And there are not many holes 30 inches around and 8 inches deep that will survive that long, especially in a remote area like this where there's nobody to tend to them. So it raises the question, who keeps that hole? Who maintains that hole? In addition to the fact that the hole survives, uh, the men, the six men who participated in the uh, hanging, all subsequently died of very mysterious deaths. For instance, uh, Captain Breer of the Home Guard was out riding his horse shortly thereafter, and uh, on a clear day, he said not a breath of wind blowing, and he was struck by a falling limb. Another man was struck by lightning. George Eccles was found dead in a swamp of unknown causes. Uh, Another man riding a mule he'd ridden all his life, I guess, and never had any problems with. One day the mule ran out from under him, uh, ran away with him. He fell off and died, and the uh, mule took off for no apparent reason. And there were two others that died of uh, equally mysterious deaths. So combine uh, the, uh, the fact of the mysterious deaths of the uh, six men who participated in the hanging, in fact, the whole still here, if uh, it is not some mortal human being over the course of 146 years, it keeps that hole cleaned out, then who is it? Or what is it? And that's where uh, you're left to judge for yourself.